Oh, I don't think the game liked it. Oh, it didn't like it at all. Ah, there it goes. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Play Okami. Uh, today, we're going to be moving forward by going backwards. Never forward. And always twirling. Twirling towards freedom. So first things first, we're going to mist them up and we're going to test our new Inferno power out. And mess around with... Oh, I... Uh, I forgot a key thing about the Inferno ability. It consumes more ink the larger you draw it. Yeah, we get a chance to mess around with the glaive as a sub-weapon a little bit, too. I'm probably going to switch it out after this until we take another trip to the dojo. And then for a while after that, I'm probably going to be running dual glaive weapons. Uh, glaive slotting into both the main and the sub slots. There we go. And then are you power slash too? I, oh, I start getting so mixed up with the wheel enemies and the mirror enemies. As we get deeper in. Uh, and this is the reason we started off with Demon Gate today. Because instead of running all the way back to Sasa Sanctuary, I remembered that near the gate towards North Ryoshima Coast, there's a Mermaid Spring. I just had a brain fart for about half a minute and forgot how the Mermaid Springs worked. So we want to go back to the Hot Spring at Sasa Sanctuary. That just puts a short walk away from where we're going, which was to meet back up with Kaguya. So, we are going to head out to the Bamboo Grove and see what was calling her. This is such a serene place. I've never really listened to the music here that much. So we come back to find Mr. Bamboo having a discussion with his adopted granddaughter. And there is a reason that she was called back here, specifically. I cannot live with you, Grandfather. <laughs> You're not eloping or running away, are you? No. It would have been better if they had not met before she departed. Aww. She wanted to spare him the pain. But I think the pain of her leaving without him knowing whether or not she's even gone would be way worse. She's being driven by some kind of invisible force linked to her mysterious past. And in the hole we go! Well, we're just gonna jump in the hole after her then. Are you ready to dig? I was not ready to dig, apparently. The problem is, there's this part with a water spout later on, and she keeps getting stuck. And I don't know if it's a bug or if I'm doing something wrong because I've never come up against this before. <laughs> like 
Like, I've never seen this happen. She should be falling down any minute now. I don't want to... Oh, she's just taking her sweet time. Okay, now we turn you around. No, 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 no. Turn around. Okay, thank you. That's a little wonky, but that'll, that'll do the job. Oh, nah. Let's not have you getting hurt and losing time. Uh, did she? I think she got hit by the spike block above her. I'm pretty sure I just saw the time penalty thing. And back you go. I don't know why I didn't just power slash her and turn her around, actually. Ooh. Uh, I don't think we're gonna get an ink pot back in time. So that's a bummer. And it's not just the time penalty, she falls down forever. She does eventually get back up. On her own. Uh, I used to think that you had to bloom her to get her up. I don't think that even speeds it up, though. If you bloom her while she uh, walks around, she'll start running. I don't know if she recovers uh, more quickly. I don't think so. Uh, so this is one of the parts that I got stuck on, and then it just stopped happening the second time I was here, and then you see in the lower right, it happened there. So this is now my third shot at this. So far so good, but this is the one that sucks. I'm surprised that it recognized such a wonky, wonky spiral. Okay, please, I am begging you. Oh, come on. In, in, in. Oh, yeah. We shall... D yeah, we have 30 seconds. That's fine. Not the cleanest, but we take those. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Uh, maybe? No, I don't think so. I don't know how I keep forgetting to bring it up. Uh, there's an additional way to earn blue fangs to trade with the Emperor. And it's on the loading screens. Uh, there are too many games you can play while the game loads. You always get one at random, I think. Before I go on with that, let's just take a second to appreciate the majesty and the splendor of what, of what just appeared before us. It's a gigantic metallic bamboo shoot that looks suspiciously like some sort of uh, space shuttle. But that couldn't be. That couldn't be. So Mr. Bamboo came to this grove, found this metal chute, and out came a cold, nearly lifeless baby. And that baby turned out to be Kaguya. He and his dearly departed wife nursed Kaguya back to health and raised her. This is so beautiful and sincere. And he always feared that if she found this again, that it would take her away. Yeah, not a dry eye in the house, Eason. Though I may leave, my heart remains with you. 
She cannot resist the mysterious force calling to her, though. See me off with a smile on your face. He asks her to remember one thing. She is his precious granddaughter. <laughs> what a nice part. We spent all that time... Oh, the fire tablet! There we go! We spent all this time in the dark recesses of the palace, like all these spiders, the, the miasma of disease inside the Emperor, and then we just get this really nice soft tone. Like juxtaposed right against that. It's just this nice contrast that makes this even better. Well, shit, her planet needs her. Like so much of Okami, there are folkloric roots to the story playing out with Kaguya and Mr. Bamboo. And this one is particularly special because it comes from a monogatari, which is a form of traditional Japanese prose. Uh, it's And it's one of the oldest that we know of, going back something like 1,200 years. Uh, it's called The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. And it does indeed follow a bamboo cutter who comes across a metal bamboo shoot in a clearing with a child inside, and she eventually grows up and returns to where in space she came from. And that child is, of course, Kaguya. I mean, both here and in the story. I don't mean, like, that's who Kaguya in this represents. No, it's just Kaguya in both. <laughs> Uh, now with that, we have the fire tablet, which is what we needed to cross the Lake of Fire in Himiko's palace, so we're going back to her. So the fire tablet we just got is just what we need. It is our Goron tunic. And now this uh, Holy Artifact Scroll appears to, I think, just let us know to do this. It grants the wearer protection from fire. We still can't, say, uh, make a lily pad here, but it's not that much lava. And there, we finally meet Himiko. Yeah, you think he's soon? Looks like that freaky shut-in is praying or something. Security here was pretty tight. Nothing we couldn't handle. Go get him, Amy. Benevolent Amadara Amaterasu, I've been waiting for you. And Isun, the traveling artist. You too, of course. How'd you know our names? Anyway, first things first. You knew about that funky mist in the water dragon, didn't you? You've got some explaining to do. Tell us what you're up to. My people, my poor people. Their suffering torments me. Sickened by this mist and terrorized by the water dragon, the cries of their pain wash over me like a torrent. <laughs> 
So ask the natural question, Isun. We know what's going on. You're tormenting the people of- Oh, wait. Oh, I'm misremembering the conversation. He's going all out on her! Oh my god. He's going ham. I love it. Eason, your words are very harsh. But you're right. <laughs> you're right, but you shouldn't say it. <laughs> she has an origin mirror on her. I offer my most sincere apologies. And now we see which is stronger in Isun, his revolutionary impulse, or his horniness, which will win out. My prayers will not cease until we are rid of this curse, until I have located the hateful monster's stronghold, Oni Island. The moment of truth. <laughs> What's this about monster stronghold? Are you saying that's the source of your city's problems? Can't say I've ever heard of Oni Island, or whatever you call it. And what do you mean you're trying to locate the island? I mean, it's an island, right? It couldn't have just floated away. Oni Island is elusive. Oh, I love these. It vanishes each day at sundown, shifting to a new location. No one knows where in the vast wide ocean it will reappear. So even if I wanted to dispatch an army there, it would never arrive. Don't say. Still, why do you stay cooped up in this room all day long? I mean, what good will it do to simply pray day in and day out? Himiko- <laughs> Isun's literally just accusing her of doing thoughts and prayers. <laughs> She trying to mess with us? <laughs> so, gaze upon her crystal ball. My family, the Yamatai clan, has ruled Seon City forever. This crystal ball has been passed down through the generations. Where did they get it, I wonder? I can foresee the future in it. And it will tell me where in the ocean Oni Island will appear next. You could find Oni Island in a jiffy with that thing. So what's the catch? Exposing a stronghold like Oni Island demands much holy power. But if our enemies knew about my prayers, they would stop at nothing to prevent me in my mission. That is why I've locked myself away. Prayers are our only hope. But the spearhead of the enemy's forces may already be on its way. Well, thoughts and prayers. That's a pretty good story, Queenie. I'll go along with it. I mean, what the heck? I'd do anything for a pretty lady. Damn it, Eason. It's really walking that that horny revolutionary tightrope here. By taking this crystal ball in my hand, a powerful magical barrier is erected to dispel any misfortune. You will be struck down by divine forces if you try to approach. This crystal ball ensures my safety. Wow, too bad it only, I guess, works on you. The burial will protect me from their attacks. 
thank god the monsters could kill everybody in Seon City, but she'll survive. Pet me. What? No! Please pet me. I want pets. I want ear scritches. Terrible. I entreat you again. Will you hear my request? I guess. The options are I guess or sounds boring. The water dragon is a sea god whose task is to maintain order. We invite chaos if we try to slay it. Without the water dragon, Oni Island is beyond our reach. We have to keep going back. This should just be one long conversation. Even if the crystal ball shows me the location of the island. The island's powerful- whoops! Any attempts to break the shield will only result in our own pain. But the water dragon could break the shield with ease. It could form a bridge over the sea to the island. So, yeah, that's the next question. How do we calm the water dragon? You're the only one who can take this on. And yet we have to go one more time. I think this is the last one. Are we gonna help or what? Yeah. You truly are a benevolent, so I entrust you with this, the border key. It allows you to cross the border. So the border gate is that gate just north of uh, the mermaid fountain. To the Dragonian Domain. Alright, let's get going. This is going to allow us to access the entirety of North Ryoshima Coast, which is another huge hub area. Alright, I think we're close enough now. You'll have to speak to my colleague if you want to cross the border. Hmm? Hey, that's a border key, a permit from Queen Himiko for crossing the border. What on earth are you doing with something like that? Well, rules are rules. You must be on some kind of important business. <laughs> Is it possible that I... that maybe I'm Himiko's dog and I just found the key and ran off with it and now you're setting me loose towards North Ryoshima Coast? <laughs> oh, right. Oh, no, that's not going to be it. I have no idea how shy I was of that. Oh, right, I started talking about the minigames at the loading screen before, but couldn't finish my thought because there was a touching, beautiful scene playing out. Uh, so, for one of them, you have to mash X to get 50 paw prints. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I totally missed my cue there. Bonjour! Why so grumpy today? Used to be one big curse zone out here, but yours truly pulled off one of those great divine interventions, so Waka can do that too. Hey, you saved us the trouble of having to do something that we've done a million times already. And he is right about the beauty of North Ryoshima Coast. Oh, there are some nice vistas we're gonna get a look at pretty soon. Yeah, so there's the, uh, the... 50 paw prints one, and the other one is a rhythm thing where you have to uh, tap in sequence with the paw prints. Oh, you're not one of those imposters who claims to be an artist but couldn't paint a picture if his life depended it depended on it, are you? It's just something some old man mentioned. His grandson, who was also his apprentice, ran away from home. 
when he took the old man's painting of a wood sprite with him. Do you think he might claim to have painted that masterpiece? I mean, there are so many unscrupulous people out there, sometimes it's hard to spot an imposter in the wide world of art. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Oh, he's such a great bastard character. Au revoir. All right, so real quick about the mini games. There's the 50 paw print one, and then the rhythm game. Uh, you tap in time with up. Oh. oh wait, no, that wasn't for. Him. Uh, that was just a transition. This dude is the Earth Nose. Another one of those distinctive wheel type enemies. It's normally very fast, so of course we use the Veil of Mist that we just got in the most recent dungeon, and its floral finish is also the Veil of Mist. And we get three fangs out of that. Not bad. Uh, so for the, the Rhythm Game one, it's the one where the Paw Prints will show up one after the other, and then Eason's silhouette shows up. You tap in sequence with that. Uh, and when you get all of them right, you get fangs. Those were taken out in the Wii and PS3 versions because the game's loaded too fast. Uh, and they were only recently added back in for the most recent set of releases with menu options to enable or disable them. I'm... I'm bad at both of them. I'm horrendous at both of them. Uh, I can never get the rhythm for the one right, and then for the tap 50, I'm never prepared. So I always start like two seconds late. Goodness gracious, what will I do? I'm at the end of my rope. This is Cyclone Chef Umi much like uh, Yama back in the city. And the water dragon's making it hard to get fresh fish. And this is mainly a seafood restaurant. The fish I need aren't being caught. Guess all I can do is sit tight and wait for good news. Uh, so this is why, off screen when I was getting ready, I picked this up. Uh, this is the Marlin Rod. You can get it from the Merchant in Sand City for 10,000 yen. See how bad I am with this rhythm? Ah, that was okay. You need to get them all right, though. Oh, hey, it's the water dragon just hanging out. All right, so that is going to do it for today. We're going to finish that side quest for Umi uh, next time and then move on with the plot some more. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.